So this story is called The Goldfish Boy. What do you think the story is going to be about from the title and from the front cover? Um, a boy who probably feels a bit lonely or trapped. Yeah, because he's stuck inside a goldfish, goldfish bowl there, isn't yeah. he? Okay, let's have a little look inside. So do you want to start reading chapter one for me? Yep. Mr Charles had sunburn right on the top of his head. I saw it while he was inspecting the roses. He studied each flower, giving the larger ones a little shake to see if any petals fell off as he edged, edged along the pathway. The big, bold patch on his head was now a bright red, shiny circle surrounded by white, fluffy hair. He should have been wearing a hat in, in this heat, but I guess it's hard to notice if the top of your head is burning when you're, do it, when you're busy doing things. I noticed, though. I noticed a lot of things from the window. It's not like I was doing anything wrong. I was just watching my neighbours pass the time. That's all. It's not like I was being nosy. Why do you think Matthew watches his neighbours? Probably because he's a bit lonely and yeah. he doesn't have friends. Yeah, of course, great. And I didn't think the neighbours minded. Occasionally, Jake Bishop from number five would shout things up at me. Things like weirdo, freak, or nutter. It had been a long time since he'd actually called me Matthew. But then he was an idiot, so I didn't really care what he said. I lived in a quiet, dead-end street in a town full of people who said how great it was that they didn't live in the big, smelly city of London, and who then spent most of the mornings desperately trying to get there. Why do you think they're desperately trying to get to London? Because um, of jobs, so like shops. Yeah, so they work there, yeah, good. There were seven houses in our small cul-de-sac, do you know what a cul-de-sac is? No. So a cul-de-sac is a small group of houses that are on a dead-end street, so there's no way that you can pass through. All right. There were seven houses in, a, in our little cul-de-sac, six, six of them looked the same, with square bay windows, UPVC front doors, and whitewashed walls. But the seventh house stuck between number three and number five, was very different, built from blood red bricks. The rectory looked like a, like wait, the rectory looked like a guest at a Halloween party when no one else had bothered to dress up. Do you know what a rectory is? Is it um, a house which belongs to some a member of church? Yeah, so somewhere like a priest would live. Yeah. Good, well done. Its front door was black with two triangular windows at the top that were covered from the inside with some old cardboard. Whether it had, whether it had been put there to stop the dra droughts? So if you look there, it's af, like laugh. So that's drafts. You say it? Drafts. Do you know what a draft is? No. So if you have a gap in the door where it, the cold air comes through, that's a draft. So the draft is the cold air. Do you say it? Drafts. Good. Whether it had been put there or to stop the drafts or to stop anyone from peering in, who knew? Dad told me a developer had tried to flatten the, re the rectory 20 years before when our, house, when our houses were being built, but it dug its 100-year-old foundations in and somehow managed to stay, like a rotten old tooth. The vicar's window, old Nina, still lived there, though I rarely saw her. There was a lamp in front of a room window that she, that she left on day and night, a glowing orange bowl behind the grey curtains. Mum said she kept a low profile because she was frightened that someone from the church was going to make her move out. Since with her husband dead, it wasn't really her house anymore. On her front step, she had three pots of flowers that she watered every morning at 10 o'clock. I watched her and the other neighbours from the spare room in the front of our house. I liked it in there. The lemon walls were shiny clean and it had freshly and it had that freshly decorated feel, even though it had been five years since it ha had happened. Don't be silly, Brian. We need to make sure it works, don't we? She had she had wo wound. Wound. She had wound the keys. Wait, she had wound the little key 
at the top and we'd all watched as the elephants twirled around and around to twinkle twinkle little star. When the music had stopped I'd clapped. I was only seven then and you wait, I was only seven then and you do silly stuff like that when you're that age. The office had a window that looked out on the street and I saw the I saw my neighbours begin their day. 9.30 a.m. Mr. Charles is deadheading his roses again. Do you know what deadheading means? Uh, no, not really. So it's when you're pruning flowers and you're taking off any of the flowers or petals that are dead? Yeah. He's using some new clippers with red handles. The top of his head looks sore with sunburn. Mr. Charles could have been anything from 60 to 95. 65 to 95. He never seemed to get older. I thought he just found an age he quite liked and stopped right there. 9.36 a.m. Gordon and Penny Sullivan, Sullivan appear from number one. Gordon gets into their car as Penny waves to Mr. Charles from across the street. Mr. Charles waved back and twirled his garden clippers on his fingers like a cowboy been snipped at the air three times, the silver blades glinting in the sunlight. Penny laughed, her eyes squinting, and she put her hand up to the shade. Wait, she, wait, his, her eyes squinted, and she put her hand up to shave them, Good. but then her face dropped. She'd stopped, she'd spotted something, me. Mr. Charles followed her gaze, and they both started stared at me That's it. at me wait, stared at me looking at them from my window i quickly stepped back and vanished from my from view my heart thumping i waited until i heard gordon gordon's car reverse out of the driveway and then i looked out on the street again well done 90, 9 42 a.m penny and gordon leave to do their weekly supermarket shop, supermarket shopping 9.44am, Melody Bird appears from number three, dragging their dashund Frankie behind her. Lovely. Why do you think these little bits are written differently? Uh, because like they're his notes in his diary or yeah, something. Yeah, so he's watching everybody and he's making yeah. notes. Good, well done. It was a weekend, which meant it was Melody's turn to walk their dog. Her mum, Claudia, took him out during the week, but I didn't know why they bothered. He never seemed happy about it and he spent the length of our road trying to turn back. Melody picked up the wool on, on the sleeve of her black cardigan as she walked along, stopping every three steps for the little dog to catch up with her. She practically lived in that black cardigan. Even though it was about 30 degrees out there, they stopped at a lamppost while Frankie had a sniff, before digging his paws in and trying to get home. But Melody dragged him onwards.